Yo, Issa. My school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right, then. Pico, Manning Cup. Oliver Yashil, you make me link up. The was the jump dance up, Ben. Yeah, massive championship weekend coming up and the historic first beckons for one school on Friday as a new champion will be crowned in the Issa Manning Cup football competition. Mona High will be contesting their first ever Manning Cup final while Heidel will be taking part in the urban area showpiece for the second time. The match is set for the National Stadium in Kingston and Heidel's head coach Devon Anderson is imploring fans to come out and witness the spectacle. We are back in Manning Cup. This feeling is a very excited feeling for us. You know, we want to be the champion. That's why I am. That's why we are here. As someone said before, part one team, part one team out with Manning Cup is concerned. The top two team is here. There will be a festival tomorrow. Just come out, plan to enjoy yourself. Meanwhile, Mona High's technical director, Craig Butler, says his team is eager for the clash. But when I played Manning Cup final in 1984, and it has never left my mind. And for the boys, this is something that will remain with them for the rest of their lives. So they're very excited about it. They're very determined to come through. And they're very unified. Um, it's a very exciting thing. Um, Manning Cup has done a lot in terms of opening up the eyes of Jamaica to whatever it is that you're doing and these boys have been playing, it, playing a brand of football that I don't believe it has been seen before and they're very excited about ensuring that in winning they'll be able to continue that sharing that brand with the country to make the country a better national team. The one and only Craig Butler. Now, the Walker Cup final will also be contested on Friday. That's the Urban Area Knockout, and it will precede the Manning Cup final, starting with a pregame show at 2.30 p.m. local time. That's 3.30 ECT, and Jamaica College will take on St. Andrew Technical in that match. With us to preview the Manning Cup final is our in-house football analyst and self-proclaimed prediction guru, Lejay Williams. Um, and Lejay, you know what? At the start of the season if someone had said to you that on championship day in the urban area you would have St. Andrew Technical and Jamaica College in one final and then you would have Heidel and Mona in another final you would say yes but you would probably think that the Manning Cup final would be JC and Stats and Mona Heidel would be in the Walker Cup final it's not the case and a first-time champion will be crowned. Let's start with the Manning Cup because it's the big one. Mona versus Heidel. Yeah, that's a huge matchup. Uh, I'm expecting a lot from it. I know a lot of people would be disappointed. Maybe some Jamaica College fans, St. Andrew Technical fans, even some Kingston College fans, that they won't be seeing their team in the final. But I do think, especially after the semi-final round was, was drawn, I do think that these are the two best teams left in the competition from that point onwards. So I, I'm expecting a really good game. I, I think that in the case of Heidel, you know, at the start of the season, a lot of people were really high on them. And then as the first round faded and into the round of 16, and people were saying that, oh, maybe not so much, maybe they're a little dark horse. But I think their quality has told all throughout the competition. They have, I, I'm glad that Rudolph Speed came on the show beforehand because he has a lot of players that are playing for this Heidel team. He mentioned Keanu Jackson, Ronaldo Barrett, who have come on the show previously and stated that I think that he's a top three player in the competition in urban area football. I would like to upgrade him to a, a top two, and he's definitely not number two, Ronaldo Barrett. I think he's absolutely fantastic, and Omario Henry, they have talent really out of their ears, and I think they have a very steady hand that's leading them as well in Devon Anderson, and I think that their system has evolved, and they're playing really well right now. And in the case of Mona, we but know before, what... Before you get to Mona, I want to stay on, on Heidel a little bit here, because... Remember at the start of the campaign, they spanked Kingston College, came out of the same first round group. And following that spanking, there was an appeal and they were docked three points. Kingston College got those points from that game. But resulting from that as well was the fact that they lost about three players that they would have been looking to help them through this campaign. 
how much do you think that would have impacted them and maybe even slowed their progress because although they continue to do well they weren't as emphatic as you rightly pointed out as many expected them to be so how much do you think that that decision where they lost about three quality players impacted them and slowed their progress i think it impacted them a lot actually because i remember doing a match with them and calabar earlier in the season and I saw that their system going into now the latter stage of the competition has changed greatly. They didn't have an out-and-out striker anymore, so they started playing more of a, a false nine and a number 10. And then after that, so I, I think that they've changed a lot. And I think what they've changed to, I have to give props again to their coach, Devon Anderson, because he changed to a system that could accommodate, firstly, all of their best players and have all of his best players doing what they're best at. If you look at someone like Omari Henry, for example, you have him running in the channels. He's probably one of the fastest players in the competition. You have Ronaldo Barrett playing in a, at the base of a midfield, and at the same time, he has players around him always to play those short passes and also having strikers to run in behind in those channels as well. So I think his profiling of his team and his tactics have been relatively spot on so far this season, and I think they've been fantastic. Yeah, Ronaldo Barrett is a fantastic player to watch, by the way, um, for Heidel. Let's talk about Mona now, shall we? Yeah, Mona, extremely talented team. They returned, I think, in double digits players from a team that went to the semi-finals last year. And I, I came into the season thinking that they were one of the three favourites for the competition. You know, the other two favourites who were playing the Walker Cup final, of course. So they are the survivors. So I do think that they're an extremely talented squad. And they've proven that they, they're really outclassed in judges, I think, in the semi-final. And I, I think, above all, they're an extremely fit team. And they have a lot of grit and determination to them, in addition to the all the boundless um, quality that they have as well uh, as well as great coaching obviously yeah. so I think that this matchup I, I think these two teams dovetail against each other really well and then I think it can go either way really because of I think what each team does well goes against the other team's weakness so I think that we could see this game going either way yeah you spoke about Mona and you gave us a lot of the good qualities of the team any area as they get ready for this big final on the weekend that you can pinpoint at the top of your head that they need to improve on very quickly um i think i think i would, they would they're probably their transition defense you know they, they they play a very open style and against heidel a team that is not shy about getting the ball from back to front really quickly with balls over the top so i, I think that would be their weakness and of course temperament as well. They're a very aggressive team. They feed off emotion a lot and I think that if they're in a situation and they're leading or they're behind, I, I, I don't want it to be a case where they'll lose discipline whether tactically or just gen in general play. So I, I think that would be their weakness but I'm hoping that that will be in check for the game on Friday. Yeah, Craig has been somebody that has been in the headlines where football is concerned and Phoenix Academy, Leger, a win for Mona come this weekend what will it mean for this phoenix academy well you know i'm actually really glad you asked that question because i know i have friends that have been in phoenix academy or were in phoenix academy from the leon bailey days coming up so i i, I and i've known about the phoenix academy all this time and you know throughout the years people always said because you know craig isn't a, a very popular person in Jamaican football circles. He knows that. Everyone knows that as well. So. Isn't a very loved person. Yeah, yeah a very because loved popular, person. he is. Yes, he is very popular. He was popular. one of the persons when I just moved to Jamaica, I heard a lot about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but for, for good reason. I know he produced one of the, the greatest exports in Jamaican football history. And, you know, people, instead of giving him credit for that, people like to use that with a stick to beat him with. You know, saying you only produce Leon Bailey, you've never been able to win any titles in the unders level since you said that you can create all of these players. Why not performing at unders level or schoolboy level? Well, now he's coming to schoolboy football and in only his third season at a team that never made the semi finals before he accomplished that. A team that never made the final before he accomplished that. And he accomplished that not only just by taking up some great players, it's players that are in his academy. All of these players play the Craig Butler way. So I, I think. Every, all of the credit has to go to Craig Butler because of what he's been able to develop, the culture, tactically on and off the field, how these players behave as well. So I think win or lose on Friday, all the credit has to go to him just because of what he's done with this program and generally what he's done for football in Jamaica. Yeah, quick one. How badly will Mona want to avoid a penalty shootout on Friday? <laughs> well, I mean, they, they, they missed, what, three or four penalties? I, th I think the... four in a row now. Yeah, so that... that I, 
Yeah. Well, the, the thing is with Mona players, and I know that they, they won't show that they're lacking confidence, but if you have several players missing penalties, naturally it's going to be on your psyche. Yeah. So I think they'll want to avoid that, especially because Heidel has won a penalty shootout yeah. already just to even get into the final. So they'll want to avoid that, but I have a feeling it's going to be a high-scoring game. I'm not sure if it's going to go to final. Yeah. For a penalty shootout. Penalties, yeah. In 25 seconds, DJ. Jamaica College versus St. Andrew Technical. JC won three Manning Cup finals against them, 2017, 19, and 2022. It's the Walker Cup this time. Can stats turn it around? I know they would love to. I heard a lot of stats fans and even some people who are close to the team saying that they are most glad that Jamaica College went into the Walker Cup with them so they could beat them this time. Well, I'm not going to give an outright prediction for the Manning Cup final because I'm unsure right now. But for the Walker Cup, the prediction guru is here, guys. And I'm going to say that Jamaica College will bring home their fourth Walker Cup title on Friday early. You can watch it on Sportsmax, you can go to the stadium, or you can do both of them. You can catch it. <laughs> By the way, you can watch it on Sportsmax too, to be specific. It starts with a pregame show at 2.30. So this prediction guru is a convenient one. He decides when he wants to make a prediction. And you want, by the way, you want ladies to predict and gentlemen, the medical final too? I want you to predict everything. That's what the guru does. And, tell, tell and, me. and by the I, way, ladies and gentlemen, while I give him a second to think about his prediction, he got the Champions Cup wrong. Um, because he said Clarendon College, um, and he got he said Clarendon College would win everything. So there you go. He got okay. that wrong. But okay. anyhow, it's your time. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go to Mona. I think they'll come from behind. I'm giving you extra points. I think they'll come you need from. It. <laughs> I think Mona will come from behind, win the Mining Cup, and I think Jamaica College by hook or by crook will win the Walker Cup. Those are my predictions. From, Thank you so much, Lizzie. You know. Yeah, hook or crook. A most Jamaican term, mm -hmm. <laughs> right across the Caribbean, wherever you are, stay with us on the other side of this break. <laughs>